Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to episode number 12 of In and Around Pleasant Hill podcast with Alex Kodadat. I'm really excited about the, uh, the two folks that I'm going to be interviewing today. Um, I have Zach and Lauren. How are you guys doing? We're doing yeah. good. Good, good. Now, you know, the title of this is um, look, uh, uh, look, let's see what you got, right? Right, Zach? Let's yeah. see. Let's let's see what you got. What you got. There you go. So as always, guys, do me a favor. Make sure to um, tune in, subscribe to my podcast and share with someone that you think that could benefit from listening uh, to our podcast. So let's dive right into it really quickly. Um, uh, Lauren, you want to tell me about you, your background, and then we'll then we'll we'll go over to Zach. All right. So my background would be I grew up doing gymnastics. I think I started when I was about four. Okay. Um, I competed in acrobatics, so I did gymnastics and acrobatics for about 10 years. Um, and then from there, switched to diving and a multitude of other things, including uh, professional water skiing and high diving and being a stunt double. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then got older and had kids and then um, put them in gymnastics really young, um, just because I had always grew up in a gym and loved it. And I uh, wanted that for my kids. So my kids started when they were one and a half and three. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Now, what about you, Zach? Uh, yeah. So I don't have that kind of background in gymnastics until later on in uh, my early 20s. Uh, but I did all the sports that you could probably think about, uh, except for soccer and swim. Uh, so I did baseball. I did football, basketball in middle school and tennis. And then when I got to high school, I uh, did a little bit of golf. And then my sophomore year, probably the closest thing to gymnastics that I've ever done before coaching, uh, my buddy signed me up uh, for a tryout to try out for a breakdance team that our school actually had. So uh, I actually think I stuck with that longer than any other sport that I tried. Uh, so I did breakdance for three years all the way till I graduated high school. And uh, then after high school, just uh, slowly started looking for, you know, my path. Started off in college, uh, you know, trying to find direction, taking classes just to kind of work towards something. Then, uh, you know, I don't know how deep we're trying to get, but uh, um, second year of college, um, you know, I actually went through pretty uh, traumatic event that uh, kind of stopped my entire like path that I thought I was going down. Um, I was in a car accident. And when I got out of the hospital for that, I ended up um, trying to go back to school and just was struggling. So I went from trying to go down that path, you know, the academic way and uh, took a big turn to, uh, to the workforce. And I started off in the oil and gas industry doing pipe inspection. And, you know, I did that for like a year and I just started feeling like kind of down because I felt like I had no purpose. And, uh, you know, you, you get in this bubble where you start finding your path. And uh, whenever when you feel like you don't have a purpose, you kind of, you look for, um, for something more in life and maybe your subconscious starts acting certain ways. And, you know, in the end, uh, oil and gas ended up taking a, a uh, turn to where I uh, wanted to go a different way. And, uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, talking I, about talking about purpose. I mean, I believe in that so much. It it's such a waste that you have. You see, so many folks they go through their, their whole life and they never figure out their purpose. Like, why am I here? Like, you know, they, they don't search, or maybe they just give up. But that's wonderful. So you so you were able to find your purpose, correct, Zach? Uh, yeah, you know, trying to put it all into context, it's kind of more difficult than I expected. Um, don't really talk about myself too often, but yeah, in the end, um, you know, I got out of oil and gas, uh, I was going through some rough times in my early twenties and my buddy got me into coaching gymnastics. And since the day that I walked into the gym, you know, I, I felt a different kind of energy. And, uh, as I started coaching as an assistant coach, you know, I started realizing that I had more purpose in life and uh, I just stuck with it and so I've been coaching now for eight years uh, started off at one gym where 
Uh, I started off as an assistant coach and within three months they offered me uh, an opportunity to you know be mentored in building a uh, boys team so you know they helped me out a lot in uh, what I'm doing today um, and I spent a good four years there and then eventually I felt like I needed to learn more in a different uh, gym so I moved to another gym and focused more on the management side they taught me a lot there got a lot of good mentors along the way and then uh when I finally moved to California, that was like my ultimate test to just see like if I've been listening this whole time to see if everyone that's been kind of guiding me down the path, uh, if I actually picked up what they were showing me. And, uh, you know, I came into a gym here in California and started coaching as a team coach and then also, you know, as a manager. So I put both of the uh, opportunities that I learned at two different gyms in Texas together and, uh, pushed for that so right that was a good opportunity as well all right yeah yeah um lauren you know they say gymnastic is a mother of all sports and you know you starting out at the age of four and then both of your kids one you said started at one and what what the other one started what age uh three three so um what are the importance of now i know a lot of folks they put their kids in different sports at a very young age but you know why is it important to get your, you know, your child into gymnastic? I mean, because both of mine, I wish I would have got them there even sooner. Why is it important to get them at there, get them in there at a very young age? Um, for me, the biggest thing was coordination. I think my mom originally put me in gymnastics because I wasn't a coordinated kid. Um, and so, and I had be, like going through gymnastics and all the other various sports I did as a kid. I ended up being very athletic and I'm a fairly coordinated person. So I wanted that for my kids. It just, it creates like a core strength and um, just flexibility and balance that you can use in literally any sport. Um, and I wanted, even if my kids didn't stick with gymnastics, um, I wanted them to have that going through life. So when they say mother of all sports, so, I mean, what do they mean by that, Lauren? Um, I think gymnastics is really the basis for a lot of sports. Um, it teaches teamwork as well as being able to be independent. Um, it teaches body control. It teaches um, a lot of mental aspects for different sports, whether you can be, you know, you're on a team in gymnastics, but you're also competing individually. So I think that teaches a lot of different life skills. It definitely does. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Zach, um, you know, you, you, you're, you're focused right now on the, on the youth. Like, what are the age range that you're training right now? Uh, yeah, we train all the way from uh, four to 14 right now. Um, okay. You know, so on competitive uh, team, we have six to 14. But in the entire program, we have a couple of uh, four-year-olds. Now, if someone wants to join gymnastic at, a, at an older age, I mean, like as an adult, would that be kind of too late to do that? No, I mean, I started when I was 21 um, and you know, my only background was, you know, a little bit of tumbling from when I was on the breakdance team. Uh, of course, I had the benefit of I was learning how to coach it. And I think once you kind of understand something, you're able to do it a little bit better. Um, so I had a lot of time in the gym. Um, so the training I got, I was able to do a lot with it. Um, so I can do a lot of the gymnastics uh, fundamentals. But if someone was just interested in coming in, spending like one day a week to work on a handstand or work on some fundamentals in gymnastics, and I don't think you're uh, you're ever capped at your age. It's more about your just uh, physical ability. We have an adult fitness class where they come in once a week, and I think the age range is from like 17 to you know, late forties. So when I, so when I join you guys, I'm going to be the oldest guy there because when I'm 50, so you could yeah, you bump it up to, to, you know, 17 to 50. Cause yeah. I actually, yeah, I spoke to teen. I'm like, Hey, we got to join this. This thing is really, really cool. Um, yeah. Lauren, besides gymnastic was, you said acrobatic also too, correct? Yeah. I competed um, as a women's pair as well as a women's trio um, as a kid and okay. did pretty well. Now, tell me a little more about that, please, the acrobatic part of it. So acrobatics is um, you're competing on the floor only. 
Okay. Um, you're either in groups of two, three, or four. It's either a women's pair, a men's pair, a mixed pair, which is both men and women. Um, you can compete as a trio, which is three girls. It's now actually expanded to being just three people. Um, and it can also be a group of four. So it could be four boys or a mixed group of four. Okay. Now, if, as, as, you know, as somebody that wants to put their kid in sports, would you recommend them to start with gymnastic or acrobatics? Which one would you recommend first? It totally depends on what they're looking for. Um, if they like doing all the different apparatuses, like for the boys, uh, rings, parallel bars, high bar vault, um, pommel horse, any of those then I would suggest more just general artistic gymnastics. But if you like the idea of like building, like holding different balance positions or tossing and catching someone, that's a little more acrobatics. So it just kind of depends on your preference. Right, right. Now, Zach, I know that, you know, um, you guys are at a level where the kids are competing, but when, so do you guys just take anybody in or do you guys have to do a tryout first to see if they're even going to fit with what you guys are looking for when it comes to competition. So it's kind of like uh, when you go to a, most companies, they promote from within, you know, yeah. so you get, you start on an entry level job and then you, you work hard, you show commitment and then you get promoted from within. They don't really yes. just hire you on um, to like a top position. Uh, so it's kind of like that same foundation where, you know, most of our athletes um, that moved a team, they started off in our recreational program. Okay. Um, Every now and then you get a former athlete who's competed maybe somewhere else and uh, they come in and we do do an evaluation. Um, and if they're already at that point, then we can find a spot on the team for them. But yeah, typically they start off in recreational gymnastics. Uh, they come in the gym, they start showing more interest. Um, so maybe they move towards a developmental program, which is like a preteen. And then, uh, so we have the Jedi's, which is a preteen for like five, seven year olds. And then we have the Mandalorians, which is a preteen for seven or eight and older uh, athletes. And then they'll spend a little bit of time in that. Uh, that gives them the opportunity to spend multiple days a week in the gym to where they can see all six events uh, throughout the week, as opposed to coming once a week in the gym where they're probably only going to see three events uh, each week. And then they won't hit all six unless they consistently come uh for two weeks you know and so forth um and then from there you know we usually do move ups at the beginning of summer uh if anyone's interested then we always try to create that path towards success um it just it's a sport that takes commitment so that's what we like to see before you know we uh guide you down that path because the end goal is success and we don't want to set anyone up for failure yep you know you talk about purpose i mean i've you know, when I created a, a Facebook group last year to support our local restaurants, I always teach my kids to, you know, impact other people's lives. I mean, you too, I can say for myself, you guys have definitely, from what I've seen, you guys have influenced and impact so many children's lives. I mean, these kids are going to grow up and they're going to be grateful to both of you forever. I am grateful to both of you for what, I mean, when I see Ryan and I see what he can do, like that video that you showed me that day. Uh, Zach, yeah. that, that yeah. like, I mean, I mean, that, that just like, I don't care all the money in the world. That was like priceless to me. You don't understand how yeah. wonderful of a feeling that is to me. So, I just, hear that. you know, yeah. I mean, it's like, like I'm in the real estate business. Yeah. I sell houses. I give somebody a key. I'm happy for them. And then they're gone. They're out of my life. Like, I don't, I mean, don't hopefully don't refer me clients, but I don't really see them, but you, yeah. both of you, you guys are you guys are changing these kids' lives forever. I mean, you you guys are talking about being a mentor and, and like shaping their future. It's 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 unbelievable. It's that's something that I just want to let you know that when you both wake up every morning, understand that. And I understand that, you know, running a business and you got to pay the bills. I understand that we all have to pay the bills, but it's just like what you do, not everybody does that. There are people that can make way more money. But it's like, for what? I mean, like, what is, what is the fulfillment? I'm like, maybe they're happy with it. But for me, my wife will tell you, we have a very successful real estate company, but I enjoy doing podcasts. I enjoy going and, and interviewing local restaurants. Like literally yeah. after this podcast, at four o'clock, I have to go to Martinez to do an interview of a sandwich shop. And I enjoy that. I don't get paid for it, but I enjoy it because I feel like I'm giving back to the community. So I just want to let both of you know that I'm, 
I'm blessed to have both of you in my life. And, and you know, Zach, with you working directly with um, Ryan, you've, you, you've had a huge impact on my son's life. And, and I'm always grateful for you for that. Um, so, um, Lauren. Alex, so- you've got a big heart, man, and we appreciate that. And it's funny you mentioned that, uh, you know, it, and I think what it comes down to is adding value into other people's lives. Um, I think that's why I've stuck with gymnastics for so long. Uh, and I struggled before coaching gymnastics because every job I had seemed like there was no purpose and like I wasn't adding value. Uh, I mean, when I was a server, at least I had that 30 minutes to an hour with that group of people and I got to help them pick out their food and they enjoyed that. And that was like a temporary like uh, moment where I added value in their life. but gymnastics is long term like this is something that I feel confident in selling because I know it's going to benefit you know not only the kid but the entire family because they work on uh, work ethic discipline in the gym you know they uh, get to really kind of wind down a little bit and put their focus towards one thing and it helps them organize their mind Um, and then on top of all that bonuses it's a great workout you know you get physically fit from doing it but uh, the, the coolest thing is I think the way that it develops the mind it does. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's wonderful. I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, uh, Lauren, so um, your kids, they've started at a very young age and I've, I've seen both of your kids. I mean, your daughter's the mini you. She's like, I always say, she's like, she's like, God took your face and made a copy of it and your daughter came out. I mean, it's like identical um, and they've done wonderful um, and I know that they're probably going to stick with this for a long time. But typically, what is the life expectancy? Not I don't say life, but the interest expectancy from what you guys have seen a child coming at a very young age to like what age do they usually stick with gymnastic majority of them? It kind of depends. Um, it, you can get those kids that start at one and a half years old and they're in it. Like they are, they're going for the Olympics and they want to be through it, you know, all the way through college. Um, both of my kids have mentioned that they, their goal is to go to college. Um, so my guess would be 23, 24 ish years. <laughs> they could be in the sport. Yeah. Good. Yep. Now, actually that's good. You brought that up. So there are scholarships for gymnastic that, that f- from the various colleges. There are, yeah. Um, There's scholarships for both um, men and women's artistic. And there's also scholarships for acrobatics now. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Is it very competitive to get that scholarship? Or, I mean, absolutely. Um, Very competitive. Men's gymnastics is pretty competitive. But, you know, there's such a great community, I think, in the sport that there's a lot of men's gyms and just gym uh, gymnastics facilities in general that I think uh, have a lot of great coaches who have a passion for the sport of men's gymnastics yep. that they're working on building whether it's a scholarship from within their gym or they're just working on finding ways for the program as a whole uh to continue the sport as a whole to continue uh you know flourishing uh, and maybe provide more scholarships for kids later on but yeah it's a competitive sport um and it, you got to work hard to make it to the collegiate level but it's possible it absolutely is so so let's talk about a kid comes in they first get on the uh, recreation part of it and then once you guys see that they have potential then you guys invite them to come over to competition correct yeah absolutely okay um and 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 once they get on that what does that look like i mean i know what it looks like because my kid comes out you know i know the days the hours But for for our listeners right now, if they're thinking about, you know what, I want to put my kid in gymnastic, right? I mean, like once they get to that area, like how many days a week do they need to be training and how many hours? Yeah, so uh, beginner class level one, uh, they train once a week um, for 70 minutes. That is uh, first option. If you want to add a second class, um, then you can get the second class discount. But that's usually enough. We make sure that we spend enough time in the gym when they do come in. The 70 minutes allows us to focus on the warm up and then maybe have a little bit of fun and games at the end. And we still don't miss out on the gymnastics as opposed to, I think, a lot of uh, gyms will do like 50 or 60 minute uh, classes. Um, so that helps get the ball rolling. Right. And then it's really going to come down to the interest in 
the, the student and what they really want to get out of it. If it's just they want to get a party trick, learn how to do a cartwheel or maybe even a backflip uh, whenever they're hanging out with their friends or their birthday party uh, and they just want to show something off like that, you know, then it's, you know, whatever work you put into it. It could be one right. day a week, be two days a week. But yeah, we do get a little bit more time in the gym as you start getting to the competitive level. So entry level was level three, and then they spend nine hours a week in the gym. Uh, and that's broken up into three workouts each week. And then that almost doubles when they get promoted to the next level. And then uh, right now, our guys in level six, uh, they train 23 hours a week. You wow. know? And so uh, it, we have the hours uh, designed to where there's going to be moments of high intensity, and then there's going to be moments of relaxation where, you know, you got to let your mind cool down. You got to hydrate. You got to make sure that you're, uh, you're mentally there. Um, and we account for that too, to make sure that there's enough time in the gym to where they don't have to be at high intensity at all times, to where they can actually have a moment to be a kid and hang out with their fr teammates, their friends, and uh, just, you know, be who they are uh, all at the same time, getting in the uh, adequate amount of training. Um, and, you know, it's up to the coaches here to know when to push them and when to let them kind of take a break. So, yeah. Now, uh, Lauren, doing it. right, Lauren, now what about you with acrobatic? How does that work with when, you know, the, do they have to go through recreation first and then move over? Or how does that look like? Yeah, it's very similar to boys gymnastics for um, the boys artistic side, um, where you can start out with just one day a week, um, usually about an hour a week is what we start with. Um, and they learn kind of how to shape their bodies and how to hold their bodies and a little bit of basic tumbling. And then from there, if they show commitment, they can bump up to a, um, a developmental team, which is about two to three hours a week. So you're coming into the gym two days um, for a little bit more time. And then from there, again, if you show commitment and um, it, Acro is a little bit more of a, a group commitment than artistic where you have to commit to not only the team, but also your partnership. So um, commitment's a big thing for ACRO. Um, but if you're willing to do that, then you can jump up to team, which starts at level five for ACRO. And it's about six to seven hours a week for those guys. That's awesome. That's my awesome. top guys are training about 11 hours a week right now. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so that if some, now someone that's listening to this podcast right now, um, and they're thinking about getting their kid involved. How, how, how can they do, do they call you guys? Or do you guys have a website? How can they connect with you both? You know, whether it is acrobatics, men's gymnastics, or they're a dancer and they want to learn an aerial, front aerial, uh, Valdez, anything like that, uh, we have um, a class for them uh, or adult fitness um, where we focus on fitness and gymnastics base, uh, basics. But you can access all those details on our website, CaliforniaStrongAthletics.com. You just kind of click on the tab that makes sense to you. And then it'll have an opportunity where you can click uh, create an account. Um, and you just create the account and it'll show your schedule and opportunities to uh, come in the gym and you know get some work in. That's awesome. That's wonderful. Um, Lauren, is there anything you'd like to mention before we go? Um. Not that I can think of. I just, I don't know. Gymnastics has always been a love for me. Um, and I was excited to have, I get, you know, one boy, one girl. So I get to see both sides of it for that's both right. men's artistic, women's artistic, as well as acrobatics. So yeah. that's super yeah. exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You've done wonderful. Thank you for everything you've done. And what about you, Zach? Is there anything else you'd like to talk about before we go? Yeah, you know, absolutely. Uh, you know, we, we have a great thing going on here. Uh, the way we started uh, was not the way that I imagined opening a gym in the middle of a, a pandemic, but, you know, we had such a great uh, community of families that were supportive of our mission and they knew that, you know, we were the people that could guide them. So with the combination of everybody coming together, we were able to build this, you know, small facility that's grown over the last year and a half. And, yeah. Uh, and mission-minded to continue growing and to uh, add value to the community. Uh, gymnastics is the tool that we use to uh, influence our younger generations and try and bring everybody to get, uh, together. So and that's all. Uh, that's all I have. Other than that, you know, we we want to see what you got. 
And, and yeah, exactly. We want to see what you got. Absolutely. And you know what? I can endorse to that. And I don't usually endorse to too many because I mean, most places I go to, I mean, I, I only see them once and I, I'm not constantly going there, but absolutely. I can say that you guys are the best. I am grateful me and my wife, both of us for what you guys have done for uh, my kids. Thank you so much. I appreciate you both. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, guys do me a favor, make sure to, um, Tune in to our future episodes. Uh, for those of you that, that tuned in and listened to this episode, please give us a five-star review. Make sure you share it with your family and friends. Get the word out. And definitely let's um, you know support California Strong Athletic. Um, if you know anybody that's thinking about getting involved in gymnastic or acrobatic, please reach out to them. Uh, one more time, Zach, what's the website again? Can you give it one more time the website? Yeah, CaliforniaStrongAthletics.com. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. You're the man, Alex. Thank you.